All right, let's talk about the she aspect of a she task. This is the major part of your assignment, but it's a chance for you to branch out from the hardcore technical chemistry or physics and focus more on what would be considered sort of a humanities approach to the science. You could almost imagine that you would be like a science journalist for ABC or Cosmos or something like that. Um, you're writing about it in a way which makes people interested in the science that you've researched and the people that are working on the project. And you've got to look at the difference between specific versus general. You need in-depth and you need detail. So uh, the, one of the best examples I often find is when, it, um, when we're talking about uh, global warming. I mean, to be honest, I've read so many she assignments on global warming, it's starting to get really boring. That's my problem. I mean, if you want to do global warming, go ahead. I will make sure I don't downgrade you because of my personal issue with reading the same assignment five million times. But you get to the she part and they might say like, application, removes carbon dioxide from the air, influence, will reduce global warming overall for the whole planet, which is great for humanity. I mean, you know, no shit. You know, it, it, those are very general, well understood assumptions. A more specific example would be to um, look at a brand new kind of carbon capture and storage method, which would store carbon in a brand new, different way, which is commercially viable. And here's the research group that did it, and here's a picture of the scientists that's involved, because it's all about the humans. And you've got this sort of depth and detail and specificity there. So rather than saying it's great for the whole planet, it's more about here's a brand new technology. It's really exciting. It's got some wonderful, um, I mean, that, that's not true. I don't really believe that about carbon capture and storage, to be honest. <laughs> we just need to stop setting fossil fuels on fire. That's the easiest way to not fill the planet with carbon dioxide. It's not about finding a way to take away the shit I shouldn't swear, that comes out of the fire and stick it under the ground. That's just storing your problems for later. Anyway, enough on that. Um, you need to look at depth and detail. So don't just talk about the planet in general, talk about the specific research project. So if we're looking at specific versus general, you need to do um, two examples. Have I written that somewhere? Two letters. You need two letters from CC Dial. So you could choose collaboration communication. And so often collaboration communication and application limitation are considered a letter. Um, you could do all of them if you wanted, but the, the direction from SACE or the recommendation is that you choose only two because it allows you to give in-depth detailed examples of how that has been achieved. If you do all of the letters, you can sort of get this general example of each, but then you don't get that chance to show some analysis to say that to finish off the so what bit. Like if you say, well, they've invented this new technology. So what? They published it in a journal. So what? You know, you, you've got to go to that next level. And, and that's what you say. Well, the journal was uh, a really world renowned peer reviewed scientific journal. So what? Well, it's been cited 165 times by other scientists. So what? Well, those scientists have gone on and they've done other research based on the research that has occurred. You see, you see you're going to that next step, next step, next step. So what? So what? So what? And uh, that shows analysis. It shows an understanding of the um, thought process, the scientific process, and the whole point of doing research is to, you know, to to build on what people have done before and, and, and make things better. Um, you need to nick language from the subject outline. When I say direct statements, I say, um, you know, these two universities have worked together. This is a great example of collaboration and communication as we have two research groups, one from China, one from Australia, they've, they've got different languages, but you know, they're communicating, so on and so forth. 
you, you've got to say this is an example of this and you and you put the the heading can be the letter that you're talking about you, you don't want to make me have to sift through your science as a human endeavor content trying to determine if what you're going on about is either development or influence you you don't want it, it needs to be really clear and it needs to show analysis and and part of that is going to be researching now you've got two approaches to choosing the letters one of them is to, to choose a letter and then go search for stuff to back it my favorite is just to do the vacuum cleaner approach which is once you've chosen your topic hopefully you've chosen one that people have written a lot of stuff about you just go to every credible page that you can locate starting from wikipedia and going to all the references they have there and you just grab everything and then you go through it and you start to highlight examples in your mind of well that's a great example of communication and collaboration you tuck it away and once you've got a bunch of different areas that you can work with you then choose the two most impressive easy to analyze easy to report on examples that Im show an impact of science on society that show the human interaction involved that have a photo of the smiling scientist and quotes and things you can use and then you 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 use them to select the letters let let the content select the letters for you rather than you select the letter and search for the content i mean it's up to you you do it the way you want but when it comes to showing evidence of cc dial and therefore ka3 in the rubric i like to go by the um the whole work smarter not harder thing but we, we're, we're now calling it me for mm you know what it should be me for m squared or yeah so minimum effort for maximum marks which is work smarter not harder so uh, the new concept is me for m squared that's that's the that's what i'm all about i don't see any point doing heaps and heaps of work if it's not going to be worth anything for you um now when i was talking about uh being able to see um see the evidence in your sheet that that's part of that whole haystack thing i don't want to be looking for a needle in a haystack as they say and i don't want to be looking for hay in a haystack either it, it's that whole flow and feel but also really damn obvious what i'm reading and there needs to be some kind of link between the technical stuff and the she you can't do technical on one side about one topic and then she on another the link can be tenuous but it still needs to be linked now when it comes to the whole human it's all about the humans we're talking about well, what are humans for i mean they're a scientist they have a biography more often than not on their um, website for whatever university they work for or whatever commercial company often they will list all their papers that they've published um, you can go to those papers and you may not be able to access the full scientific paper straight away <coughs> um, the library has access to just about all journals so if you need some help with that and you do want to read it and you can't sort it out yourself with your own cdu login go to the library and speak to them they'll help you pull the paper they they absolutely love it when students come and get assistance and i think if that ends up being like a high school student it, it makes them feel even better about it because people are interested in researching you you'll make their day but who's to say you'll actually understand the damn research paper half of this stuff is not understood by most regular scientists you need to be a, an expert in that area to really get what's written in there i mean if you get it that's fantastic but what you can use is the abstract at the front often the abstract will contain all the juicy content summarized in a paragraph and you can just simply quote that stuff and it's more often than not easy to understand because that that's the that's what they're trying to use to to latch on to the the prospective scientist who might cite their paper and the thing is the more people that cite a researcher's paper the more cred they get and it's it's that academic cred which then can permit further grants for money and and you know guarantee their wage get them the next academic rank level because you know you go from like lecturer to senior lecturer 
associate professor, professor emeritus professor. Like that, it's like the bloody academic army. You know, it's there's a process there. And if you're doing all your research and you're bringing in grant funds, then that means that you can continue to co co uh, just do research. Um, research scientists that don't get grant money have to contribute back to the university in other ways, for example, having to run courses and teach uni students. So that's the other way they do it. And then on top of their research which they want to do they also have to teach and mark assignments and tests and whatnot and so that's why they'll normally publish the crap out of anything they're doing in the hope that um, they can get some academic cred and draw the draw the the cash because that, that's what this is all about it's always about cash look at the publications and the citations talk about what journal it's published in we're talking peer-reviewed scientific journals here that means like if it made nature for example which is what, the preeminent scientific journal, it accepts 8% of all papers. Um, and you can just look at the journals page on Wikipedia, it'll tell you a bit about it. And when it's scientifically peer reviewed, that means that they sent your paper to three anonymous credible scientists and they go through it and they decide whether or not the way you've done your scientific study and if your data is correct. If it isn't, if they think that the, they can smell a rat, then it gets rejected and you never get published. That's why when someone reads you know, it'd be like reading, uh, I could read news from the Australian, uh, not the Australian, I wouldn't want to read that. Um, I, uh, we're talking like ABC website, for example. You can read the news from the ABC website or maybe from SBS and that's pretty good, albeit slightly left-wing journalism. Or I could go to the NT News and get my latest Donald Trump information from there. Well, it's a bit different, isn't it? You know, you've got to look at the credibility of the sources. Do you get your latest information from uh, a scientific um, articles website like Cosmos? Or do you go to some QAnon Facebook group from the United States or 4chan? Or stay away from there. Um, it, these are why scientific journal publications are, are, are very trusted and it's about sharing your information with the rest of the world there, you see. You're, you're, you're publishing it. That's why I think communication and collaboration, because that's always what they're doing. They're trying to communicate what they've done to get more money. Well, that's one of the easiest letters to show. And you don't just have to only show communication once. You can show it twice. You can do two in-depth examples of communication and collaboration and get an A+. Plus. Easily. I mean, it's up to you which letter you choose, but you can either choose two of the same letter or one each of two letters. I've seen people pull it off with three letters, but you're going to be pushing it a little if you do any more, because um, it'll eventually get to the point where you simply don't have enough words to talk in detail and in depth. Um, I am a big fan of photos, of research groups, of, of you know, things that demonstrate either the people, because it's all about the humans, or um, the research groups, or maybe something of what they've achieved. You could have a, a screenshot of the paper that they've published, or you use that snipping tool to cut out um, a, uh, a sh where it shows how much they've been cited, anything like that. Just visual examples. So we're talking here non-word based communication of the sheep. Give it a shot. And in all of this, you've got to make sure that it has a flow and a feel. You don't want this start, stop, start, stop um, approach. It's like if you put the evidence for the science's human endeavor in the first, I don't know, 10 lines of the page, and then you do a bit of technical cam, and then you do some more she, and then it's like a giant dog's breakfast. The evidence is there. I still have to mark it. If it's all fantastic stuff, then you know, you're going to find KA1 is going to be an A, but your KA4 is going to get impacted because it has been difficult to read. It's not a, a good submission. The, um, the links between she, like you don't have to separate the technical from the science as a human endeavor, but I often find that that's easier. It's up to you, the manner in which you structure it. But just remember, it needs to have flow and feel. Okay, I think I've said enough on that.
Where am I at? 14 minutes 57. 